uh, near the California-Nevada border, where more than 50,000 people are under evacuation orders as the massive Caldor fire threatens the Lake Tahoe region. Firefighters have been working day and night to contain the flames over the past couple of weeks. Get this, it's already torched nearly 200,000 acres and destroyed hundreds of homes. Most people in the wildfire's path have left unsure if they'll have anything to come back to. The flames are closing in on South Lake Tahoe. That city hasn't seen danger like this in decades. And Nevada has officially declared a state of emergency as the Caldor fire intensifies. Carter Evans reports on the uphill battle to get the flames under control. This is what firefighters are facing. Choking smoke, massive flames, and relentless wind, whipping the Caldor fire closer to tens of thousands of homes around Lake Tahoe. Crews spent hours Tuesday dousing spot fires, working to save as many homes as possible and trying to hold back a massive wall of flames. They're facing gusts of more than 35 miles an hour. As the fire continues to move further into the Tahoe Basin, military aircraft at 18,000 feet above are sending back infrared images like these to guide firefighters to hot spots hidden by the thick smoke. Very, very sensitive sensors can pick up any signature of heat. We'll plot it. We'll get that down to the firefighter on the ground. They can go attack it. You can see the fire just taking off in this brush. In fact, little fire whirls right there, but firefighters are letting it burn while the wind is calm to clear out the fuel between here and the homes just about 100 yards away. Snowmaking machines were running full force Tuesday night as firefighters moved in to protect the heavenly ski resort from the fast-moving flames. These densely forested areas haven't seen significant wildfires in more than 80 years. This one's really scary. I'm afraid it's going to burn down in Jewel of California. Even the wildlife, including these bears, were forced to seek refuge from the flames. And as the erratic wildfire closes in on this now deserted resort paradise, fire crews are ready for battle. The same winds are coming through. These areas are ridden with strong, heavy fuels that can easily ignite, spread this fire quickly. And Carter Evans is with us now from South Lake Tahoe, which is under an evacuation order because of the wildfires. So, Carter, there are red flag warnings in effect there. What does that mean in terms of the conditions and what are the conditions like right now? That means we could have high gusty winds throughout the day today and that red flag warning is in effect until 11 o'clock tonight. Uh, so we've got over 12 hours of windy conditions ahead of us, although you wouldn't know that by looking around right now. It's a dead calm right now, and I was just kind of remarking with my crew out here that it got a lot colder in the last hour. It's, it's really chilly, and, and that's actually good news for the fire because it helps the fire lay down in, in situations like that. It was not as windy as they were expecting yesterday. It was a red flag condition day yesterday as well. The winds did not develop, and that allowed firefighters to get ahead just a bit. So, Carter, what other factors besides the wind and the dry weather are allowing or causing this fire, rather, to spread so quickly? Well, you know, you've got a lot of fuel in the area. You, you mentioned it before. Uh, this area hasn't seen danger in, in, in decades. And down at the basin here, I don't think they've ever had a fire all the way down in the basin here in Lake Tahoe. So these forests are thick, although they have done some mechanical thinning in some areas. Overall, there is a lot of brush to burn here, a lot of dry brush, a lot of dead trees, and that fire just races right through that type of material. So one of the concerns over the past week has been the Caldor fire approaching the Lake Tahoe Basin. Can you give us a sense of just how close the fire is and how people are preparing? Yeah, I was taking a look at uh, some maps yesterday, and it looked like it was closer than three miles to the outskirts of town, maybe maybe two miles or so. And so it's made significant progress in the last couple of days. There was concern last night that um, the Heavenly Valley Ski Resort uh, was going to be in trouble, and you saw that in the story there. They turned on those snowmaking machines blowing water all across the hillsides there, a fine mist in hopes that it would keep the flames away. My understanding is uh, the flames have crested the ridge, but not come down, at least, at least yet. And how many crews right now are fighting this fire, Carter? I mean, presumably you'd have to, it'd be an all hands on deck situation. Yeah, so uh, there are not enough firefighters here, and firefighters would tell you that they'd certainly like to see more. There are about 4,000 on this fire right now. Very difficult terrain 
for them to fight the fire on. And there are a lot of homes to protect here, thousands and thousands of homes in this area. And that's what they're focused on right now. You go out into these neighborhoods uh, just a little bit out of town, you see fire trucks and fire crews everywhere just ra waiting, ready for battle. The governor of Nevada has declared a state of emergency in response to the fire. The Caldor fire hasn't actually crossed state lines yet, but the, there's an expectation that it will. How close is the fire to the border? And is Nevada seeing any effects? Often when you have a fire this large, um, you know, there are air quality concerns and, and sometimes other things. Yeah, it's very close to the border now, and they've... Uh, uh, issued a mandatory evacuation in some parts of Nevada now as well. The, the smoke around here is, is tough. During the daytime, the air is hazy. And you can't see that far ahead. Uh, it's also difficult for firefighters because they can't really fly aircraft in this type of weather because they can't see what they're trying to drop uh, drop retardant on. So that's why they've got that plane flying high overhead with the infrared vision. It can look right through that smoke and guide firefighters to the hot spots. Well, that's really interesting. Carter, thank you so much. Sure. So you can continue to follow local coverage on this story from CBSN Sacramento. Just download the free CBS News app or head on over to cbsnews.com slash live. That is where you can find all of our CBSN local streams.